So at the top of my list is Let's Scare Jessica to Death from 1971. I have yet to finish this film after starting it three times, maybe four times. It must not be the right time for me. I've heard too many good reviews of this. I didn't find it scary. I didn't find it creepy. It is said to have a lot of atmosphere, which I would probably on a scale of zero to 10 for atmosphere, I'd probably give it about a six. Certainly not like an amazing amount of it. So I did not finish Let's Scare Jessica to Death. It looks like a 1970s horror uh, pre-Omen and there's really not, it doesn't look like there's much mysterious to it. Now, if you've seen this movie, this is one of the reasons I do this to reach out for help, help me. So if you've seen it uh, and you want to chime in, let me know what I should look for or why it's better than I think or why I should finish it, then go ahead and do that in the comments. Let's make it a dialogue, not just a monologue. What do you say? On to the next film that I did not finish, Life Force of 1985. Well, I'm not that impressed. I was really hoping for something from this film. To me, the best Tobe Hooper is The Fun House. Have you seen it? 80s film? Totally creepy, freaky, sideshow freak, cooped up by himself, goes nuts and kills people. It's just, that's not really the plot, but it's something along the lines of sideshow freak. I'll leave it there. The Nudes, which I must admit was part of the reason I sought this film out. They were pleasing to me, but I just didn't latch on to what was going on in the plot. Maybe it isn't my time to really take in this second film that I tried to watch this past week. It is very highly reviewed film. Again, if you know about Life Force, I've seen a lot of you guys writing about it on Twitter and on your own sites. So Tobe Hooper's Life Force must have something going for it other than the nudity, which is darn good by the way. Uh, <laughs> Is it the brunette that's the best, or the blonde, or the short hair, or the long hair? <laughs> anyway, that sounds a little bit sexist, so I'll back off from that. I, I'm just kind of joking around about things I feel uncomfortable about, but uh, hey, it was done well. My next film is Ghost Story, and this was neither scary. This is from 1981. Uh, it was neither scary nor atmospheric, so we're kind of going zero for zero around here. Fred Astaire is fun to watch, but he's actually way past his prime in this. It has the best title though, Ghost Story, and font and artwork, and that yellow moon with everything else two-tone. Here's another one that I haven't seen, but I've tried to a couple times. I'm definitely gonna see this one, maybe even like today or tomorrow. But I do wanna make a few notes about it. And if you'd like to see it and then we could do a show on it or you could make it a, a dialogue in the comments, that's why I'm here. I guess if it continues to be so easy to do, I'll probably have to challenge myself by getting some more people on, but um, you could also enter into this with me love to have you so it's called the old dark house uh it's my first time watch i started watching it and have you seen it leave leave replies i didn't finish this one because it was just moving too slowly for me and i think i had a block about it being from the 1930s and sometimes you think about those shiny horror movies that just came out that are begging for your attention. I think that's what happened here, but should I see The Old Dark House? 1932. Open 24 hours. Should I see Open 24 hours? So we'll leave it at that. Seems like it's kind of a lower caliber film than the ones I've been mentioning, but hey, I could be wrong.
Julie Darling from 1983 is supposed to be an incest movie. Uh, very taboo, but it also looks like it's it's very famous and almost cult status, so I haven't seen it. And the reason I didn't see this one is because I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it to even buy it. And then I did find it. I think it was $12.99 on Amazon to stream it. And I'm like, do I really want to see a dad sleep with his daughter? I came to the conclusion that maybe another time. Okay, 1BR was one. Have you seen that one? That's a strange looking one. One bedroom. Stigmata. The Sound of Metal. These are all films that I saw last week. Have you seen The Sound of Metal? I mean, I would say... If you're going to go out and see a movie or you want to see a movie tonight, see The Sound of Metal. It's an amazing film uh, about uh, a drummer in a duo, rock band, punk band really. And the singer is his girlfriend and she is Olivia Cook from Ready Player One. And isn't she cute? Yes, she's very cute. She's got those eyes. Very cute. Anyway, so the movie's brutal. I won't say too much about it because... In truth, there's really the, a lot of points going on here that a lot of people will take a lot of meaning out of this movie in different ways. I uh, was really struck by the point where the drummer was realizing his hearing was not coming back. That got me in the gut. I love this actor. He's amazing. He's from a miniseries. Uh, it has him landed in jail for an unprovable murder. Great show. I think that this could be a real moving role for him. And I think it's going to touch a lot of people. He has that face that appears to hold back emotions, but it's really just not feeling them. He's a cold, calculated killer. Well, you'll have to see the film on your own. It's a mini series called The Night Of that he's in. It's in my top 10 of all miniseries for sure. Riz Ahmed. I can't believe I haven't said his name yet. He's the muscle man. And I must say he's done well at the new Starling workout years. They all seem to fall into that. I, I'm i like uh, Beck. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a total fucking wimp. I think he's got arms skinnier than mine, but I digress. <laughs> when I was a kid, a girl said to me, you're so skinny, it's gross. And I should add that when we were all sneaking uh, girls into our cabins at camp, when I look at photos of me in seventh grade, damn straight I was skinny, it was like a rail. But that one girl didn't have to be so mean. Here we have what we would have called a bug. By the way, if you have stories about how people were mean to you in childhood, you know, put them in the comments. Let's, let's make it a dialogue. Apparently they're successful, but when the guy needs an operation to at least slow the deterioration of his hearing, his agent seems a little reticent to write the check. Why? These are things you have to figure out on your own. Still, I am recommending this film highly. I'm also here to tell you the process is gut-wrenching. I didn't really want to wade through the guy's blood, sweat, and tears. Maybe I'm just not in the mood, but I leave it here for you with a strong recommendation. I do this because friends love it on Letterboxd, and I loved it when I saw it. Just don't need the heartache today. Stigmata. This movie is great because Patricia Arquette is in it. I only took... A half star off for the Void story. Again, Arquette is a babe for the ages. Here's my review. This is from the 90s when people still held on to the cultural idea of signs and wonders and miracles from the church. Unfortunately, it's hard to even find this theme anymore. It is fun. Still, would we want it at the expense of reason in our horror? Of course, there is a place in movies for nonsensicals, but what up here? Yes, the writer and director chose an El Estupido idea for the plot. Oh well, he fucking got Arquette. Arquette is a babe for the ages, like I said earlier. This year I've gained an appreciation for her work. She's inspired me to 
think about doing a Babes of Horror series. She would be in that. It could go on indefinitely until I have a heart attack from unrequited love. I plan to include a lot of high resolution pictures of these babies. Also, what do you think? Does it sound interesting? Stay tuned. Stigmata is the miraculous appearing of the stripes of Christ. It is very rare. There's your film. Oh wait, one more thing. The woman getting the stigmata is hot. Oh yeah, and she's an atheist. The one who gets the stigmata. The story is just bad. Chalk it up as 80s big budget bad. Still, it has my girl. This week anyway. All my babes message me, massage me as I podcast and blog. You should see me right now. They're all around me. And uh, Annabelle from Bow Wow Wow is giving me a back rub. Hi, Annabelle. Thank you. A better film like this, as far as plot goes, is Dogma. Have you seen that one? Kevin Smith's Dogma? But it don't have my girl in it. So let me know what you thought. I gave Stigmata 9 out of 10. Leave me some comments. Let's make it a dialogue. Okay, my friends. Let's see. I started Always Shine. Um, really liked it, but I must say I got a little bit burned out. It's pretty dramatic and doesn't let up. Needful Things I watched about half of. The Hazing just after New Year's I watched. It's like a skin of Max. Hey, I'm not complaining, are you? Uh, the Curse of Frankenstein. Love the old horrors. Watch that. Galveston, and we're going to wrap it up now. The House of the Witch. Hawaiian Ghost Stories, which I actually only saw a little bit of, but I definitely want to... Have you seen Hawaiian Ghost Stories? And this has been... Let's look at my letterbox. Thank you.